I'm Kathy Johnson of Pyramid Potential. Welcome to video 57 of 60 of the Harnessing Learning Potential video series. Today it's all about the IQ. So um, for decades, for decades, we've known for decades that IQ can't change. And then all of a sudden we're, taught, we're told that there's this thing called neuroplasticity, which means the brain can change. So the question is, if the brain can change, can IQ change? And a lot of people still hold on to that concept that, no, basically IQ doesn't change. Um, however, I'm going to challenge that today. Uh, in the last video, if you didn't see it, video 56, I talked about a couple case studies where somebody, two people, lay in the hospital, IQ was barely, barely, uh, you know, how can you even ask somebody the questions if they can't answer you? And yet, um, you know, a couple years later, they're walking, they're talking, um, they actually have retrained their brain. So I'm going to talk today, though, about somebody that I worked with. When I first started working with Susan, um, she was in remedial reading, remedial math. Okay, she um, needed a lot of help. Uh, had learning disabilities, um, but we, we started, she started and she went through the whole pyramid of potential. Okay, she started off with uh, working with the primitive reflexes and the neurodevelopment to set up her brain. Then she did um, listening therapy, then she did vision therapy, then she did cognitive training. And um, by the time she was all done, this was in the beginning, so I didn't know how quickly we could do this. It took two years to find one thing leading to the next. But after two years, she was out of all remedial classes. Um, she was in high school, uh, went to a private high school, college preparatory high school, went on to um, a four-year private college where she did great, no accommodations, no tutors, and graduated with over a 3.0 QM. Uh, today, Susan is, is um, uh, in a job in her profession that she graduated from and doing very, very well. So let's take a look at her scores. So here are Susan's IQ scores. Uh, this was started in 2001, the summer of 2001, when a psychologist uh, gave her the WISC for the Wexler um, IQ test. So up here on her verbal scale, they were looking at things like information, similarities, arithmetic, vocabulary, comprehension, and digit span. In 2001, her, um, well, first of all, let me show you what's going on here. Here is 10 right here on this line. 10 is basically average. And in 2001, when she began, okay, she had some high scores, okay, so we've got you know, 12 and 11 and 9, we've got a 13, a 14, and an 8. So that's pretty good, you know, fairly average, 8's a bit low. Um, and now let's look at uh, down here in her performance scale, how she did. We're looking at things like picture completion, coding, picture arrangement, block design, object assembly, symbol search, and mazes. Now remember 10 is average. Okay, this is 10 where I'm shading it in right here. Her scores were quite low here. So we've got a 10, we've got a 6, we have a 5. Um, if you know what these mean, this is, these are very, very low. We have 11 and 11. We've got a 7 and a six. Her scores were quite, quite low. Now, two years later, after doing all of those things in the pyramid of potential, let's look at her verbal scale. She started at here, um, this score was the same, but this score, similarities, which was an 11, went up to 16. This is extremely high. Um, here, uh, arithmetic was up 11. We've got 11 for vocabulary. I'm like, wait a second, her vocabulary went down. 
Well, every time you take a test, it's a snapshot of how you do that day at that time. And sometimes, if you're nervous and you don't sleep well the night before a test, your scores can go down. So she didn't really um, probably lose uh, any vocabulary. She probably did better, uh, but she just didn't test as well that day. Um, and then this went up, uh, that was the comprehension. Her digit span went up from eight to 10. Now down here, we're looking at her performance scale and here everything went up quite a bit, okay? So we've got, um, this is 11, this is 11, this is 10, this is 14, 13, 11, and 11. Her lowest score in 2003, two years later, after doing the entire pyramid of potential, her lowest score was 10, which is dead average. Her IQ went up by approximately 20 points. Can IQ change? Absolutely.